I find it interesting how people say, well, we just need to We just need to put ourselves up by our bootstraps. People are choosing to jump on a plane and go someplace else because the notion of picking yourself up by your bootstraps is an impossible task. That phrase was created to show how impossible of a task it really is. The system is the problem. And yet, can we blame people who want to leave? I can't blame them. What do you do when the country that you live in does not give you adequate public goods in order to survive? In a society, a society is supposed to provide public goods to people so that they're able to live, to survive, maybe even to thrive. One of these things is health care for our citizens. Only developed country in this world that does not give health care as a human right to its citizens is the United States. All the other developed countries give their citizens health care as a right. Yet, you have over 60,000 people per year that die because they don't have health insurance, or you have 100,000 people die because they don't have health insurance or they're underinsured. Believe me, I know I was both. And so a lot of people now are choosing to really just leave, leave their home, their family, their friends, and go abroad. I want to go to this article that I was shared with me. Shout out to Roger, Roger Meadows for this one. And this says, more Americans, more Americans than ever, are deciding to leave the US for universal health care abroad. So let's get into this. A recent Monmouth University study shows that more than one third of the United States residents wish to move abroad. Pollsters report 34% of respondents would settle in another country if given the opportunity. 50 years ago, only 10% of, America, of Americans responded similarly. Let's stop there just one second. 50 years ago, 10% of Americans said, oh yeah, I would leave. You wanna know why? If you think about the wealth disparities that have happened over the last 50 years, your dollar went further 50 years ago than it does today. So housing costs, food costs, your light bill, right? Your car insurance, your car payments, right? All these different things that add up over time, your money went farther. So you didn't have to spend as much. But now because of what they call inflation, I like to call corporate price gouging. Most of us, if not pretty much almost all of us, can no longer afford to actually live. And with that being said, no wonder, no wonder, many people in this country would rather just leave. A third, a third of people say, I would just check out. Take that poll. Would you check out? If you could, if you have if money, if you had the means to be able to wave a wand and say, I would go to another country for healthcare. 
Would you do it? Knowing the risks of no longer or it being harder for you to see your family again, harder for you to see your friends again in person, would you still make that choice? Many of us would. Because without your help, what do you have? Let's continue. It says researchers picked Americans' brains using the same slice of life questions the 11 times since their inaugural ask in 1948, exploring Americans' hobbies, interests, and travel preferences across demographics like age, gender, race, and party line. First subheading says one third of Americans want to leave. The Gallup organization asked modern Americans the same question to give to respondents in 1974, quote, if you were free to do so, would you like to go and settle in another country or not, end quote. While the question remains the same, Americans have never wanted to leave more. In the 1970s, 87% of those surveys said that they would not leave the U.S. Only 10% expressed interest and 3% said they don't know. This time, 34% reported that they would immigrate. Let me stop there for a second. So how a third of us feel is the same feeling that a lot of people who are undocumented feel coming here. Oh, you didn't think it was going to go into immigration. Oh, yes, it does. Because we want to leave here. Why? Economic reasons, baby. That's why. Because economic reasons also translate to our health. Because healthcare is not a human right in this country. So therefore, the richer you are, the healthier you are. The poorer you are, well, you're screwed. And people can say, well, you guys have things like uh, Medicare, Med I'm sorry, Medicaid, and there's uh, CHIP, or there's the Children's Health Insurance Program and things like that. It is like, that doesn't cover everything, right? On top of that, what about the people who are just above that poverty line, which that's a whole other conversation. We need to actually readjust these numbers because more people are in poverty than the actual met metrics for poverty are uh, set. That's a whole other conversation. But if you're just above that, then you make too much to get help, but you don't make enough money to help yourself. So then what? What is your option? They say, oh, go back to school. You already went to school. Some of y'all got master's degrees. And what is that master's degree worth, worth? Is it actually worth something? Well, you just need to come up with a good idea. Not everybody's brains are built the same for certain ideas. What happened to just sick? Hell, have you guys ever seen the movie John Q? Great movie by Denzel Washington. The rundown is basically John Q being a man in America, hardworking man. Uh, they are working class. Um, and something happens to their son. I think he was playing baseball. And so the son, he could be no more than nine, 10 years old. Uh, ends up having a heart condition. I think he goes into cardiac arrest. And so he needs a new heart. But because even though the parents had insurance, it didn't cover cardiac arrest or major life-threatening conditions like cardiac arrest. And so out of desperation, he took the situation into his own hands. Now, it should never have to get to that point. 
but it feels like people are put to that point every single day. The only thing different is they don't carry out the actions of John Q. They just die. So I, I encourage you guys to watch, you watch that movie because it really puts the healthcare system through a lens, but really it's a systemic issue. It says the number of would-be immigrants reaches all time lowest in 1991 with only 9% confirming they explore other countries, though it rose post Gulf war. Monmouth university polling Institute director, Paul, pa I'm sorry, Patrick Murray says political preferences play a role in recent immigration interests. After holding a pretty steady over 50 years following world war II, there was a huge jump in the number of Americans who wanted to leave the country sometime in the last three decades. It will be, I'd be willing to bet that a partisan rancor of the past few years has played a significant role in the heightened desire to immigrate. What else drives Americans' interest in mass exodus? Foreign living platforms, expatsy published findings this year for its latest expatsy test, a diagnostic research uh, design for Americans with immigration interests. The test correlates varying data polls using quiz criteria about how they see their lives and a new culture. So it's a healthcare conversation. One of the most overwhelming responses concerns healthcare, often a bone of contention in America when asked how they expected to cover healthcare costs living abroad. 70% of those interested in relocation chose universal healthcare. I find it interesting how people say, well, we just need to, we just need to put ourselves up by our booty traps. People are choosing to jump on a plane and go someplace else because the notion of picking yourself up by your bootstraps is an impossible task. That phrase was created to show how impossible of a task it really is. The system is the problem. And yet, can we blame people who want to leave? I can't blame them. There was a report, I think it was two, three years ago. It was a few years ago about how elderly Cubans are going back to Cuba because there's two things in Cuba that they have guaranteed housing and healthcare. Land of the free, right? Let's continue. So citizens' desire to leave correlates with Americans' ever-rising medical costs. Statista reports that the average U.S. resident's health expenditure is at $13,439 per capita in 2022. This figure amounted to only $146 per person in 1960, a nine thousand percent increase over 60 years nine thousand percent you're spending thirteen thousand $439 per capita. But in 60 years, 60 years ago, you were spending $146 per capita. The National Center for Health Statistics says 25 million people, 7.6% of all Americans 
didn't have health insurance in 2023. Most insured, uninsured, age 18 to 64. Citizens of over 65 are the most insured. Why are the most citizens over 65 insured? Medicare. It kicks in when you're 65. And the crazy part is your health should be monitored from the womb to the tomb. The problem is, is that by the time a lot of people get to age 65, they've neglected their health so much that they need all this work done by the time they hit 65. And they're so broken down because they never actually got preventative health care from the ages of 18 to 65 to 64. So between those ages, a lot of people, they forego their health care because they can't afford it. So then by the time they hit 65 and they finally get that Medicare, what's going on? They have all these different problems. Some of these things are permanent issues that could have been remedied before, but they can't do it now because they didn't have the health insurance from the ages of 18 to 64. Or if they did have health insurance between the ages of 18 and 64, they still didn't go to the doctor because they were underinsured because the premiums and deductibles were too high. Because the co-pays were too high. If you have a $200 copay and you don't have 200 bucks, are you going to go to the doctor? And then what if you have more tests that need to be done or you have to see a specialist? See how that adds up? This is why people want to leave. This is why people want to go abroad. Because the one thing that will help keep us alive and the ability to thrive we don't have it as a right in this country. About two thirds of expat C test respondees are age 25 to 54. This group is more likely to have young children, but less likely to have health coverage. Shouldn't the people who have kids, shouldn't they also have health coverage? I mean, they're literally taking care of kids. They should be the healthiest possible. Okay. People need to sit with that. Since the alert of Mexican healthcare says the national recently explored U.S. citizens' insurance reliance on Mexican healthcare. Writer Sarah Ruthven describes American health insurance as a never ending labyrinth of third parties, administrators, a bureaucracy, a combo compounding America's burdensome medical debt and sky high treatment prices a sea of red tape and largely cost prohibitive met treatments means Mexico is unsurprisingly America the party's top choice and medical treatment destination. U.S. citizens could obtain a six month Mexican visa using only a valid passport, a cross border agreement that leaves plenty of time for recovery. However, experts urge Americans planning their departure to research their preferred destination and practice caution when leaving the country for medical procedures, citing numerous malpractice claims and fatalities. It's funny because I had a friend where he chipped his tooth. And instead of getting it done in the United States, which would cost him an exorbitant amount of money, he went to Mexico and got it done for way cheaper. And the funny part is, I actually watched, man, I should have I should have looked for it before I did the stream. But there was a, a young lady on TikTok talking about how she had, had uh a dental procedure done. I think it was a root canal. Or was it a uh it was something it was something uh kind of complex, but when she got it done, it cost her thousands of dollars just to get that one tooth fixed. 
and the I think it was the crown broke, something like that. Instead of going back and spending the same amount of money again, she went to Mexico. By the way, the quality in Mexico was better than the United States. And it was a tenth of the price. That's why people are leaving. We have now a reverse immigration that's going on because this country does not take care of its citizens. So now people are going where they could be taken care of. Roger Meadows talks about this a lot. And I honestly, if my nieces and nephews come to me about this and they ask me, well, I want to go, I want to go back to school. I want to go to college. I'll, I will say exactly what Roger tells me. Go, go school abroad. Go abroad, go to Germany, go to France, go to someplace abroad. If you want to, you know, if they can take you for free, go to Japan. I don't care. Go abroad. We'll Skype. We'll, we'll, we'll Zoom call. I'll see you back in four years. Why? Because this country doesn't take care of us. Hell, if the healthcare in places like Nigeria, I got to check, but if Nigeria has potentially free healthcare, some of us who are black that have Nigerian ancestry, Nigeria is actually allowing for dual citizenship if you can prove through, uh, through DNA testing that you have Nigerian heritage. You can become a dual citizen of Nigeria. Hell, would I travel and move to Nigeria just so that I can have better health care if I didn't have the Medicare that I have now? Tempting, right? Let's continue. It says the rise of medical tourism. It says many uh, Americans' financial strain propels their interest in relocation, but immigration processes are often costly for would-be patients unable to afford to uproot and plant themselves somewhere new. Some companies offer services to help Americans become medical tourists. One such platform is Health Stay, a new resource for health-seeking expats. This company offers international patients bespoke top-level medical care in the United Arab Emirates alongside elite accommodations, including luxurious post-operation excursions. Some evidence even suggests aesthetics and environment may contribute to faster post-operative recovery. Daunting travel expenses still pose barriers for many American consumers as healthcare costs and international travel are both post-prohibitive. So this here, there is a lot of people that have also talked about this, how it is actually cheaper to buy a plane ticket Go to another country that has universal health care and then pay for travel, food, expenses, and get your procedure done. It is cheaper than getting health care done in this country. And also, being around an aesthetic environment also does help you recover better. Why do you think there's parks, little mini parks and benches and stuff like that in a lot of hospitals now? Because the aesthetics also help us to recover. But with that being said, as far as going abroad, the fact that it's cheaper to buy a plane ticket to go across the ocean to afford a hotel, food, travel, and all that, and you still make out better than getting your healthcare done here in the United States. And when it comes to healthcare for everybody, healthcare for all, at the very minimum, a single parent healthcare system, people like Kamala Harris and Donald Trump don't want that. They don't want that for you. 
They never wanted that for you. And the issue is they're trying to keep you in fear so that you don't make the best decision for yourself. That's what it is. They keep you in fear. And then what ends up happening to you? You end up dying faster. Your kids, your parents, your siblings, your aunts, your uncles, your nieces, your nephews, they die faster. Because the other person is going to subvert democracy. When in reality, both of them are subverting democracy as we speak. They will subvert democracy and tell you that they're safe. Turkey sets bar from medical tourism, says across the pond, Turkey is Europe's Mexico. The transcontinental country is a magnet for European medical tourists, especially cosmetic procedures, and caters mostly to German, Russian, and British tourists seeking dental design and hair replacement therapy. Turkey's booming medical tourism industry, welcome 1 million patients in 2022, is on pace to serve nearly one quarter of the globe's medical tourists. Viral Turkish elective procedures even generate a new slang, turkey teeth, commonly used in the United Kingdom to describe the vivid white chompers in medical tourists return home with. While Americans may not need to look beyond its southern neighbor for medical tourism, they have other options. Expatsy's catalog of most recommended countries primes Portugal, Spain, and Switzerland for their position among other sought after medical destinations. I cannot tell, and here's the thing, because where you looking at Fortune Magazine, they're not gonna mention Cuba, but Cuba's healthcare is completely free. How many people, look, um, what was the, what was that um, documentary by Michael Moore about healthcare? Sicko. It was called Sicko, and they literally took a boat to Cuba. He took a bunch of people with him and got their health care for free in Cuba. Not Canada, Cuba. They went south. They went straight to the Keys and then kept going. You want to know what's interesting about Cuba? My trans siblings, come here, come here. Trans siblings, did you know that if you are a trans person in Cuba and you want to get gender affirming care as a trans person in Cuba, that is absolutely free? They've been doing gender reassignment surgeries for absolutely free in Cuba since the early 2000s, baby. You don't have the crowdfund for your gender affirming care. Just any of us regular cisgender people, but you, you, you need your eyes checked, free. You need your teeth checked, free. Want to see a dietitian? Free. Now, people are like, oh, well, nothing's free. Of course, people pay taxes, right? The government funds these things, right? You are tax dollars. And no, and none of the medical personnel are slaves, right? Because in here, and this is one of the things that always gets me when we talk about universal health care. They're like, well, these doctors and medical personnel are going to be slaves. And I want to go, okay, so the people who are working at the Social Security office, are they slaves? The people who work in, uh, in customs, are they slaves? Are FBI agents slaves? Oh, they're not. Why? Because number one, they get paid good wages. They have good benefits, typically. And for the most part, you know, they have pretty good jobs. So if you're a doctor, and let's say we have a, a national healthcare system, if you're employed by the government, are you a slave? Do you expect them to pay you subpar? The only way that will happen 
is if the government makes sure to make so many cuts that it makes the system inefficient. But if you pay them well, I mean, look what we do with the Department of Defense. We're almost up to a trillion dollars. What was that, like $860 billion that we did last year? Approved though for the defense budget? Imagine if we had a healthcare budget for a, a NHS style system here. What if we can compete and do better than Cuba? Do better than China? What if we can do better than the UK? Instead of using the money for tools that kill people, we use our money for tools that bring people to life. So they're not going to tell you about all these other countries. You know, they'll talk about a lot of the, the Western countries. But make no mistake, these socialist countries, they have universal health care. A lot of times your health care is more has more universal coverage than these European or Western nations do. But ultimately, people should not have to travel. People should not have to flee their own home just to be able to have something that's a human right. And if we can change things here, I guess we better get to work. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.